Assalamualaikum. I think uh, by now, a lot of you have got accustomed for these classes. Well, this recording is made uh, many times, a couple of weeks before the Zoom classes. And the concept of these classes that the slides along with whatever is explained reaches you well in time. <coughs> you go through it, you read it and make the concept. And by the time we come for Zoom classes, we are prepared with that. In the Zoom classes, we will again be going through these transparency slides and then I'll be in front of you and we'll be talking, discussing and explaining these things when you can see me. I think I'm not able to see you. And then we can have the question and answer session. I request you that please must come in the class with your regular ID. You are very respectable. It is very respectable to me. You are my future. You are my vision. And you are my hope. Let us be honest to each other. My work is to give you and impart you the knowledge in the best possible way what I have. And your aim is to be very sincere to your cause. And your cause at this time is to learn to learn, to learn. Of course, passing the exam is very important, but more important is to gain the knowledge because knowledge is forever. Now, during my last two lectures or <coughs> talks which have been conveyed to you, we have talked about the accidents, we have talked about the classification, the road traffic accidents. <coughs> Sorry. The factors that can lead to the road traffic accidents, the things which must be kept in mind while we are doing the certification, and then the different types of the victims. The victims, what we talk of the two wheelers, the cycles, the motorcycles, then we talk of the pedestrian who is more commonly injured and many times sustains very serious injuries and then we talk of the occupants of a vehicle in which we have the driver, we have the co-passenger and then we have the rear passenger and things like that. Now with that brief outline, we talk few of them in detail. Now we move to the pedestrian injuries and then the injuries to the occupants. We will talk about the, uh, the mechanics and we will talk about all the minor details and the resultant injuries which are due to these impacts. Now, the pedestrian can have primary impact, he can have secondary impact, he can have tertiary impact and he can have quaternary impact. Now please, as I told you last time, make your concepts very clear that as long as the victim keeps on striking the vehicle, they are going to be impact injuries. Clear? So, as long as the victim keeps on striking the original vehicle, they are known as impact injuries. So, they can be primary impact, secondary impact, touch impact, and so on and so forth. Secondary injuries. The secondary injuries are once he is thrown away from the vehicle, he might strike the road, he might strike any other pole or any other thing which is in immediate vicinity of the vehicle close to the road. And then there are tertiary driving injuries or runover injuries. Many times he is being dragged along the vehicle. So once he is being dragged, these are known as 
pressure increase and the tracking is simply on the road because of either the, the, the momentum of the vehicle which is struck which is transferred to the pedestrian and it keeps on dragging on the road and run over injuries. So I repeat, we can have primary impact injuries, secondary impact injuries, touch impact injuries. These are the injuries as long as the victim is striking the vehicle and then secondary injuries when he is thrown away, touch even and dragging when he is being dragged or he keeps on dragging the road and run over injuries when he is run over by another vehicle when he strikes by another vehicle, okay? Now, primary impact injuries are on the part which is struck first. So first part struck will have primary impact injuries. Now, the further contact with the vehicle of the same victim to any other part of the vehicle will cause secondary impact injuries and secondary injuries are by striking other objects that is ground and then uh, tertiary injuries, run over injuries, leg injuries etc. The primary impact injuries, these are direct impact injuries caused by the impact between the vehicle and the pedestrian. The height of the victim usually determines the site and nature of injuries. They are usually found on head in children, obviously. Now here, the matter is the height of the person. So if the height is small, which is usually in the case of children, then the primary impact injury would be on the head and if the person is grown up if he's adult or if his height is five feet four inches six inches then the part of the vehicle which goes to strike maybe the calf maybe lower part of thigh so that means that the primary impact injury site varies and that depends on the height of the person. That's why in the case of children, they are usually found on the head. And obviously, once the person is adult, it also again depends. It can be the legs, it can be the trunk, and so on and so forth. So meaning thereby that the primary impact injuries are those injuries which are caused by the first impact of the person uh, of the vehicle with the pedestrian and the site of the injury would be depending on the height of the person if it is a small children then it may be upper chest or head head and in the case of and in the case of adults it will be trunk, it may be hip, it may be the, uh, the lower thigh. These injuries are due to fender, lights, radiator or bonnet hitting the victim. Now the question can be that what are the parts of the vehicle which are going to cause the primary impact injury? So, your reply would be these injuries are due to fender, lights, radiator or bonnet hitting the victim. If the pedestrian is struck from behind, he may sustain a fractured dislocation of lumbar or thoracic spine. Then again, if the height of the person is such that these the, the, the fender, the bonnet, etc., they strike at a lumbar region, so the resultant injury would be fractured dislocation of lumbar or thoracic spine, 
slipping out of the femoral head out of the stabulum. So meaning thereby that these injuries would be on the part of the body which is being struck by the vehicle. If the victim is facing front of the vehicle, he may sustain intra-abdominal injuries or injury to chest wall and thoracic contents. Again, again it all depends on the height of the person. Now, if the vehicle strikes a person from back and the, the hitting area is the, the area around hip joint, then he will have slipping out of the femoral head out of acetabulum. If the head is slightly above, then fracture dislocation of lumbar and if slightly above, then injury to the thoracic spine. Now if he is hit from the frontal region, so okay, now he is going to have the injuries in the intra-abdominal organs or chest wall and thoracic contents, again depending on the height of the person. Sometimes even the pelvis may be fractured. So if the impact is very firm, very hard, the vehicle is in a high speed, so there can be fracture of the pelvis. Now, these slides are in front of you. And you see, the face of the person in the first slide is uh, uh, is on the other side and the vehicle is striking from the back. Now in this case when the vehicle is striking from the back you will see that the injuries will be in the area of the hip and the legs. So here the impact and the causing of the injuries would be on the legs and pelvis. So this is the case, this is the case when the vehicle is striking the person from behind. So here the injuries can be on the back of the leg, bruises, abrasion, laceration, etc. And when it comes to the region of the hip, then it may cause severe hit, injury to the pelvis, fracture of the pelvis or dislocation of the femoral, uh, femoral head from the stabulum. The next slide which you can appreciate is that here the speed is slow and the foot is moving. So what happens that you have a primary impact that is on the legs and on the area of the hips and the person goes down over the, the bonnet. So he sustains primary impact injuries on the hip and on the leg and the secondary impact injury on the back of the chest and the head. So then the third slide is if the impact is from the lateral side. So if the impact is from the lateral side and the primary impact injury will be on the lateral side which will be explained in pictures and diagrams in the slides which are coming ahead. Now bumper fracture. This is a very known entity. Many times this question either in the Viva Vosi or in the theory. So bumper fracture, the fracture of tibia and fibula of one or both leg occur due to impact of bumper. The fracture typically wedge shape fracture with base towards impact when bumper fractures are present, the distance from heel to fracture is measured because it gives the information regarding the height of the bumper, whether the brakes were being applied or not. This is very important. When the brakes are applied before the accident, the distance from heel to the fracture will be less than the height of the bumper. I repeat. When the brakes are applied before the accident, the distance from the heel to fracture will be less than the height of the bumper. Absence of bumper injury suggests that the victim was struck from the side by the vehicles. So lateral impact. So if the bumper fracture is not there, so that means the strike of the vehicle is from the side. If the injuries were at different level on the legs, then the victim may be running or 
walking. Secondary impact injuries. These are the injuries sustained by the pedestrian after primary impact injuries due to subsequent impact to the same vehicle. So that means the secondary impact injuries are because of the same vehicle. The secondary impact may be with a windscreen after striking the legs. Secondary impact injuries are usually on the face and head. So obviously it's the back of the chest and the head which strikes the screen and the injuries are on the, uh, the face and head. Now whether there is an impact and the relation of center of gravity with the injury. If the primary impact is below the center of gravity, then initial impact of bumper will be with lower leg or the upper leg and thighs. After impact, the victim rotates about the center of gravity and hits his back of head neck with the windscreen or the screen frame. The victim then rotates again with the legs coming to the roof of the vehicle and now he is moving the same speed of the vehicle but in the opposite direction. That means he goes all over the vehicle. He keeps on rotating and revolving over the, so he strikes the screen, then the roof, then the, uh, then the diggy and then he is thrown away. So this is the case when the primary impact is below the center of gravity. So initial impact of bumper will be with lower leg or the upper leg and thigh after impact the victim rotates about the center of gravity and hits his back of the head, back of neck with the windscreen or the screen frame. The victim then rotates again with the legs coming to the roof of the vehicle and now he is moving at the same speed of the vehicle but in the opposite direction. If the car is at high speed then the victim will fall at the back of the car. So this is, this is the, the the slide which will be shown to you. So when the person has struck, now the second uh, impact is on the screen and obviously the injuries are going to be on the head and face and then he goes and rolls over the roof and then goes to the diggy and is thrown away. Now, if the brakes are applied, the vehicle decelerates but the person continues to move forward and lands in the front of the vehicle. So there are two types of movements in this case, rotatory and translational. Rotatory and translational movements are there when the impact is below the center of gravity. Now if the impact is above the center of gravity, victim was standing with both feet firmly placed and the impact is above the center of gravity, the body is thrown forward. Clear? Now, if the impact of the vehicle is above the center of gravity, then the body is thrown forward. It is translational motion only. If the feet are sliding forward, then both rotatory and translation, uh, translational movements occur. So, meaning thereby that if the feet are firm, then you will only have translational motion and if the feet are not fixed, one foot is above the ground or person is walking, then you have rotatory and translational movement both take place. Now, these are the slides which are shown to you that what happens when there is uh, impact uh, of the body from the back, from the rear and from the sides. The secondary injuries, these injuries are caused by striking object then the same vehicle. That means now the person is thrown away from the primary vehicle to which he strikes and then he is thrown away, he may be going on the road, he may be <clears throat> striking against any other object, any tree, any pole or even to any other passing by vehicle. These injuries are found in parts opposite to primary impact and on the head. Person may be violently falling on the ground. These injuries include abrasions, grazes, bruises over head, legs, hand and hips. Lacerations over bony prominence or soil with dirt and fracture of the ribs are common. So 
if someone asks you that what are the secondary injuries and what are the places of the body where the secondary injuries are there so your answer would be the secondary injuries are found in parts opposite to primary impact on the head these are due to violent falling on the ground and the injuries include abrasion grazes bruises over head legs hands and hip so there are bruises and abrasion and laceration are present where there are bony prominences and fracture of the ribs are common this may be sq or this may be if i have a question the skull as well as spine may be fractured counterco injury to the brain may occur indicating that injury was due to the moving head hitting a fixed space now the co and the counterco injuries we talk to you when we talk of the real injury they are very important the very serious injuries and particularly the co and the counterco injuries of the skull are notorious all forms of intracranial hemorrhage and brain injury may be found head injury is very notorious very important and very dangerous so whenever a case of roadside accident comes to you and you find that the person went unconscious or you find that there is bleeding from the nose and mouth or you find that a sticky material is coming out from the nose because it is because of the fracture of the cribriform plate of ethmoid bone the person may be conscious with slight bruise but he must be kept under observation for at least 48 hours because the head injuries are very notorious the person is conscious and many a time once he goes to the home he, mo- he may go unconscious and he may die so the secondary injuries as i told you are mainly on the head and of course on the limbs the ribs are fractured and cervical spines so meaning thereby that all part of the body is are involved and when it comes to the fracture and when it comes to the head injuries these are very serious injuries and the victim must be kept under observation in the icu in the hospital because the subsequent events may be very critical very serious even once the person comes in the hospital may be conscious run over accidents these are also called tertiary injuries children are usually involved the severity of injuries produced by running over will depend upon the part of the body involved in weight and speed of the way so so dragging bhi hai baat kali but the tertiary injuries are very dangerous very fatal and many times the victims are the children now it all depends that what has run over the part of the body involved in weight of the speed when a limb is run over by wheel of a lighter car the skin and subcutaneous tissue will be detached from deeper tissues known as decleaving so decleaving is a phenomena decleaving is an injury when the when when over a limb a lighter small car runs over skin and subcutaneous tissues will be detached from the deeper tissue and this is known as decleaving so what is decleaving decleaving takes place in the case of run over accidents when a smaller vehicle which has got a less weight it runs over the limb and the skin and subcutaneous tissues will be detached from the deeper tissue and this is known as decleaving if the wheel is of a heavy vehicle that part will be crushed bus lorry truck time marks be present on the body and shows very important evidence once these cases come for the medical examination if they are living or god forbid if the death take place please examine the clothes very carefully because they will be having the tire marks the hot pipe under the vehicle may cause burns obviously the uh, there may be many in the pipes just beneath the vehicle when they are hot and they take the different body parts they cause burns if the wheel moves over the trunk a rupture of the viscera may occur so that means that the injury the severity of the injury that that depends on the type of vehicle and the part of the body which has been run over if it is a lighter vehicle it is a limb 
you simply can have degloving in the person who can survive. But if it is a heavy vehicle, if it is a bus, if it is a lorry, if it is a truck, and it has run over either abdomen or thorax, it can cause crushing and rupture of the vessel. If it moves over the fleshy part, will result in extensive degloving of the wide area called avulsion that I have talked about. And most of these avulsions they take place on the feet, and they are one of the one of the examples of the laceration. And I have been asking you in the viva voce that what is the injury when a when a car wheel runs over the foot? So it is called avulsion. Grease and oil stains may be on the clothes and body. Obviously, if it has been run over by a vehicle, then the underneath of the vehicle have the grease and oil, and those stains are found on the clothes. Pedestrian incidents distribution. This is again a general uh, uh, description of the pedestrian. The distribution regarding ages, U shape, in a graphical representation, the incidence of the peak age is 0 to 10 years and 70 to 80, the extremes of age is male preponderance in 80 percent because the male are usually uh, outside uh, on the roads, on the roads, the impact is uh, frontal. So, so these are the slides which will be shown to you and if the strike is from behind, you can see that there is area of the injury and the calf and back the calf there can be bruises and abrasions and above there can be injuries to the lumbar area. So in, in, the, in the lateral impact you can appreciate that the injuries on the lateral side there's a calf, lower part of the thigh, then the hip and then the, the thoracic region and on the uh, arm. So if the, these are primary impact injuries so if what are the injuries you say these are primary impact injuries but they can be bruises, abrasion, lacerations, and wherever there is prominence in the bones are involved, you can have lacerations. This is the uh, this is a slide uh, which is showing to you. It's a secondary impact injuries. So obviously, primary impact is on one side, and the secondary inju uh, injury is on the other side. The primary impact is because of the vehicle striking. And the secondary injury is because of secondary and the secondary injury is on the other side of the body and the primary injury is is shown in, in uh, sort of bluish green um, um, dots and you can appreciate it is in the calf lower part of the thigh then the lumbar region then the thoracic region and if the arms come in around the knee. And the secondary injury, you now the secondary in injury is because of fall on the road. And if you start from below downwards, it's in the calf, then the hip area, arm, shoulder, and head. Now the head injuries are very, very notorious, as I told you. So they must be uh, kept uh, in mind because these injuries can prove a very, very uh, fatal. Now, relationship of primary impact to resultant injuries of primary and secondary impact. Now you see, this slide is showing that the back of the person, the back of the person is towards the vehicle and once it strikes the vehicle, now this is a slide where the strike of the vehicle is mainly above the center of gravity. Okay, so once the strike is above the center of gravity, the person is going to going to be thrown away, and he is going to fall and strike the road. Now here, the concept can be more cleared. And the injuries which will be caused by the impact will be known as primary impact injuries. And the injuries which will be caused to the pedestrian while he strikes the ground are known as 
secondary injuries. And this slide shows that if the impact is above the center of gravity, then the person is going to fall down on the ground and sustains secondary injuries. Now, here, the impact is from behind. So, primary injury and secondary, so primary impact injury here of the same person, of the same person who was hit by a car, the car and the person were shown to you and these are the injuries shown and the main impact is above the center of gravity so the injuries are on the calf and if you can appreciate there is area on the the injury showing on the lumbar area so here it will causing bruises abrasion and dislocation of the lumbar vertebrae and above is the area where the involvement is of the thoracic spines so in this case this is because of the impact of the vehicle and the injuries are primary injuries and the secondary injuries are once he strikes the ground the road you can appreciate the injuries on the knees on the hands and face and head lateral impact you see here the person is crossing the road you can see that the person is crossing the road and the impact in this case is going to be from the lateral side now impact. now these are the three slides which are shown of first uh, uh, the impact and then obviously the first impact the second and how he how he rotates how he has translational uh, movements and how he has rotational movements now if the person is struck below the center of gravity below the center of gravity then he is going to have the he is going to have uh, uh, going to have, uh, go go, uh, uh, go over the the bumper then he will rotate go over the roof and then he will rotate and go to the diggy and be thrown away and in the other cases appreciate the translational movements during the accidents now so these are the different parts of the injuries which have been shown when the person has been struck so here the impact is on the back this is also <coughs> the revision of the <coughs> sorry previous slides so if you appreciate that the area of the calf there's an injury these are because of the, uh, uh, the the bumper and then you have the bonnet the area is lumbar area and then the the uh, uh, upper part of the bonnet the, uh, 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 here is the thoracic spine and the injuries if you talk from the skin it can bruise the abrasion and once you go down it is going to be the fracture of the thoracic spine the next is shown the frontal impact and these are the injuries shown and these are the injuries which take place when there is lateral impact and there is lateral impact so you can have the primary impact injuries and there is injuries that calf on the hip area on the, you know, the thoracic spines and the secondary injuries once you fall on the ground are also shown, shown on the opposite side now what the factors modify by now you must have realized that the feet are mobile are not footwear road condition and impact is frontal rear or lateral so what are the factors which modify the mobility of the feet 
stationary, moving, footwear, type of footwear, road condition, and impact. Impact can be from the front, impact can be from the rear, impact can be from the lateral side. So, so these are the dynamic of impact, impact with feet sliding. Now what happens here? That once the feet are sliding, you have primary impact injuries on the calf and hip, then the person rotates, then goes over the bonnet because of the high velocity. He just keeps on rotating and move, moving over the roof and then the diggy and is thrown away. So this is seen in the case when the feet are sliding. Here, impact with feet fixed. So when the feet are fixed, now the person is going to fall in the front. So you have the impact injuries on the calf and the hip, back of the thighs, and because of the feet are fixed, so he is not going to have all the rolling movements over the car. He is going to fall in the, in the front over the road and going to sustain the injuries on front of the knee, on the hands and the head and face when it strikes the ground. Impact from side, so very visible. So on the side of impact, you will have bruises, abrasions, and laceration. And once it strikes the ground, it is absolutely in the opposite side of the body where he is going to have the second injuries. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the patient hearing. Now I request you to please read it, listen it very carefully, make the concepts, and once we have a Zoom class, then we'll re-discuss re it. Thank you so much and have a nice day.